In this lecture, you'll learn about how ether channel load balancing works. And I'm going to use the diagram that you see on the slide here throughout this lecture. So I've got two switches which have got four links between them that have been grouped into an ether channel and each of those four links is gigabit ethernet interfaces. So starting with gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 on the left, going to gigabit ethernet 0 slash 4 on the right. In the bottom switch, I've got some PCs plugged in there. I've got PC1 and PC2. And in the top switch, I've got some servers with server 1 and server 2. So this lecture, we're going to cover how Ether Channel load balances the different flows that are going across the links between the switches. A flow is a communication from a client to a server using a particular application. If PC1, in our example, opens a web session to server 1 and PC2 opens an FTP session to server 2, we'd have two flows going through our switches. And with Ether Channel, a single flow is load balanced onto a single port channel interface. For example, all packets in the flow from PC1 to server 1 always go over interface gig 0 slash 1. All packets in the flow from PC2 to server 2 always go over interface gig 0 slash 2. So looking at that with an animation, the first packet in the flow from PC1 to server 1, it hits the first switch the switch decides which interface it's going to load balance it over it chooses gig 0 slash 1 in our example and then that goes to the server the next packet in the flow will also go over the same interface so it comes into the switch it load balances it to the same interface again and then it goes up to the server on the second flow from PC2 to server 2, that comes into the switch. The switch will use its algorithm to decide which interface to load balance it onto, gig 0 slash 2 in our example, and then it goes to the server. When the second and the third and fourth and so on packets come in from that flow, they'll all be load balanced onto the same interface. Packets from the same flow are always load balanced onto the same interface. They're not load balanced round robin across all the interfaces in the port channel. For example, we don't load balance the first packet from PC1 to server 1 on interface gig 0 slash 1 and then the second packet on that same flow to gig 0 slash 2. The reason for that is that round robin load balancing could cause packets to arrive out of order at the destination and that would break some applications. So to make sure that doesn't happen, we always load balance packets from the same flow onto the same interface so they're always going to arrive in order. So if this does not happen, you see the first packet in the flow went over interface gig 0 slash 1, the second packet in the same flow over gig 0 slash 2, we don't do that. So because the way this works, because a single flow always gets load balanced onto the same interface, any single flow receives the bandwidth of a single link in the port channel as its maximum. That's a maximum of 1 gigabits per second bandwidth per flow in our example, where we were using 1 gig links between our switches, but there's an aggregate bandwidth of 4 gig across all available flows. So you can think of a port channel as a multi-lane motorway. The cars always stay in their own lane, in a single lane, but because there's multiple lanes, the overall traffic gets there quicker. Obviously in our example, if we only had one uplink rather than four, we don't have so much overall bandwidth available between the switches. Ether channel provides redundancy as well as the load balancing. If a link fails, the flows will be load balanced to the remaining links. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400-page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest-rated course online. Thanks.